Good morning, guys. Let's go over the uh, window notes over Ray Bradbury. Uh, so uh, this is for 7th grade and 8th grade. We're both reading a short story by Ray Bradbury. Uh, Ray Bradbury was one of the biggest authors of the last century. So of the 1950s uh, was when he did most of his work. He's incredibly influential. He wrote a lot of books. He wrote a lot of short stories. And uh, so it's almost inevitable that you guys will end up reading something else by Ray Bradbury sometime in the future when you get to high school or college. Um, I guarantee you this is not your last encounter with Ray Bradbury. So uh, these window notes are a little bit different than uh, how we would normally use them. Uh, we're doing this with, uh, we're doing this independently. So I'm making this video to try and help you guys through it uh, in any way that I can. So first of all, I want you to open up both of these assignments. The first link will open up your window notes inside of Kami, and we can take a look at the questions that we have here. Um, who is Ray Bradbury? What is he known for? How has his work affected the genres of science fiction and dystopian literature? Uh, what are some facts about Ray Bradbury? What uh, of the stories Bradbury is known for, I would be most interested in reading, and then you can finish the sentence underneath. Uh, I would be interested in this because, and you can, of course, finish the sentence underneath. And then over here, what connections can you make between this author and something in your life? Okay, so if we go back to here, this second uh, link, uh, let me make this a little bigger, first of all. The second link will open up inside of uh, Google Drive. Uh, you'll just have the PowerPoint, and this is where you're going to get all the information. Now, if you see this Open With button and click Google Slides, you'll actually have a little bit more, I think, uh, a little bit more um, easier of a time kind of going through it. So I'm going to hide my camera here, so it seemed to be getting in the way. Uh, let's just kind of go through this PowerPoint uh, together while we're here. Uh, Ray Bradbury was an American fantasy and science fiction writer. He also wrote horror and mystery fiction. Uh, he was from the 1950s. It was when he did uh, a lot of his best-known works, 1930s to 1950s. He's best known for his novel Fahrenheit 451, which is a story about uh, a society where Everyone burns books. His short story, A Sound of Thunder, was first published in Collier's Magazine in 1952. That's for you 8th uh, graders who are reading The Sound of Thunder. For 7th uh, grade who's reading Dark They Were, I would actually have to look up the, uh, the year that it was published. I believe it was in the 30s. As of 1984... Uh, he was the most republished science fiction story. Uh, it, was, it was the most republished science fiction story uh, up to the present time. So this is, again, just for The Sound of Thunder for you 8th graders. Uh, but for 7th grade, you can tell uh, that this really, this means, he means business. He was a incredibly well-respected uh, and prolific writer. When Ray Bradbury was writing in the 1950s, uh, the genre of science fiction and space-themed stories that we know today just weren't around. Uh, there was no Star Wars, there was no Star Trek, there was no Marvel or uh, DC Comics. There were pretty much, it was pretty much an open field. Uh, he could, he, he was coming up with this stuff as he went. Uh, so that's the impressive thing about this. When you read these old stories, some of them don't feel like they're all that important because we've seen better space stories. We've heard and seen movies that are, I guarantee you, better than what we're about to read. But the reason this is important is because without these stories that Ray Bradbury wrote, we wouldn't have things like Star Wars and Star Trek. And that might be a little bit of an exaggeration. Um, 
so don't go around telling people, hey, Ray Bradbury made Star Wars. It's an indirect sort of thing. The writing Ray Bradbury did went on to inspire other authors, like George Lucas, who made Star Wars. And we may not have a lot of the science fiction we have without him. Bradbury is also partly responsible for the creation of the dystopian genre, which many of you may know from things like The Hunger Games and The Giver and Divergent, where uh, people live in this future society and are uh, their lives are just kind of controlled by the government. They don't have a lot of freedom, and things are just all around not good. Uh, so Bradbury really was one of the first people to write something like that. Uh, that would be, that's not something we're going to really deal with uh, in class. If you ever read Fahrenheit 451, that is something that, that he deals with heavily. Some of his well-known stories, uh, here we have Fahrenheit 451, of course I've been talking about this, is a dystopian legend uh, where the government makes people burn books because books are illegal, and this story deals with a firefighter who, um, the, the firefighters actually are, in this world, responsible for setting fires. They go to your house, they find your books, they pull them out in the back, and they burn them, and then you go to jail. And they also have murder robots, so there's that. The story that 7th grade is reading is Dark They Were, and Golden Eyed. This is a body snatching story set on Mars. I won't say much more than that so that I don't ruin it. And A Sound of Thunder is a time travel adventure, which is one of the first time travel stories that uh, deals with the consequences of time travel. So if you've ever watched Doctor Who, or some of my 8th graders uh, said that they liked DC Comics' The Flash, um, those wouldn't really have the idea of uh, going back in time affecting the future, uh, a back to the future. We all know back to the future where they get in the car, go back to the 50s, come back uh, to their present, which was it was the 80s when the movie was made, and their present is completely changed. That movie came out several years after A Sound of Thunder uh, peaked in popularity. And then another short story that he's well known for is Utterly Perfect Murder, which is a story of the mis about the mysteries of the mind, where a man basically goes insane and goes back to his hometown to murder somebody who bullied him as a child. Uh, so of these four stories here uh, that I've told you about, uh, I want you to think which one of these uh, interests you the most. Let's look at some facts here. Uh, Bradbury never had his driver's license. Uh, he never he saw a car crash when he was younger and just never got his driver's license. Um, he absolutely hated computers. Uh, he never used one. Uh, he wrote all of his stories on a typewriter, old school, all that. Uh, his most famous book, Fahrenheit 451, he, uh, there's a very well-known story of how he, uh, didn't have a typewriter to do this, to write the story on, so he went to the basement library at the university near him, and he wasn't a university student. I think he might have been teaching there, or he might have just lived nearby. Uh, and he went down there into the basement of the library, and uh, he would put a, I think, a 10-cent coin, so a dime, into the, into the slot on the machine, and it would let him write for however long until, you know, the machine would click, and he'd have to put in another, another dime. And uh, back then, the dime was, of course, more like a dollar now. So basically, he's sitting there for several days just putting money into this typewriter and typing out his most famous book. And that story goes to really show you that uh, you don't need a lot of fancy equipment and tools to get the job done. You can really make a big impact with the kind of stuff you have. This is something that we I see in this world and today's world all the time with kids who want to start a YouTube channel 
and they say, oh, yeah, but I don't have a computer. Oh, yeah, but I don't have a camera. You have your phone. You have your camera on your phone. You have a microphone on your phone. You have uh, everything that you need to do at least something. It's not going to be up to the professional standards, but it's going to be something. If Bradbury can write a book on a rented typewriter, then you can write a, you can make your YouTube channel on your phone. Bradbury was good friends with Walt Disney, even contributed to the spaceship Earth ride at Epcot. Uh, Disney, of course, was very big around the same time, or getting big, the same time that Bradbury would have been getting big. Epcot is the uh, experimental prototype something or another city of the future, basically. So since Bradbury was a uh, science fiction writer predicting the future, Disney came to him and said, hey, what do you think the future is going to be like? And uh, when NASA landed the rover on Mars uh, a few months after his death, they named the site where he where it touched down the Bradbury Landing because, of course, uh, he wrote several stories involving the Martians and uh, they were set, uh, they were written before we knew much about Mars. Bradbury died, I think, uh, in like 2007, something around there. Um, would have been when, around the time that Mars, or it would have been like 2003, maybe, when the first Mars uh, rover landed and um, Bradbury passed away. And so they named it after him just as an homage. And that's the entire PowerPoint. So uh, we can come back here to our window notes. Where'd they go? Here they are. Back to our window notes. Who is Ray Bradbury? I just talked to you about him for the last 11 minutes. I sure hope you know. What is he known for? Uh, how has he changed these genres? What are some of the facts that stood out to you? I gave you six. I'm not asking for three. And I described those stories to you. Which of them would you be most interested in reading? Uh, of course, uh, we are reading two of them in seventh grade and eighth grade, so... Uh, hopefully the one that we're reading was at least somewhat interesting to you. And what connections can you make between the stuff that I said and uh, your own life? Okay, so finish that up. Come talk to me if you need help, and I will see you when it's done.